Hi, and welcome to Talking Tech. I'm your host, Alejandro Ojos, and today we are here at CES 2025, and we have a very special guest with us. Today we have Robert Hallock. Hey, Robert. Hey, man. How are you? Doing well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for those who haven't had the pleasure to meet you, why don't you give us a quick intro of what you do here at Intel? Uh, I'm the Vice President and General Manager of AI and Technical Marketing at Intel for CPUs. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for being here with us. And Gladly. before we jump into uh, today's topic, mm -hmm. I want to address our audience here for a second. And so today at CES, we launched uh, two mobile processors. We mm -hmm. launched the Intel Core Ultra 200H uh, and the 200HX. That's right. And we actually have a video actually featuring you, huh, uh, giving you that. all the different details. That's a lot of my face. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, it's good, it's good content. Uh, it's actually, we have all the details uh, and actually in the link below. So if you want to check that out. Uh, and today we're going to have a couple of questions for you with okay. regards to uh, our desktop, which is our Lake S. Mm -hmm. And so lately we have seen, not lately, but recently we saw that there's uh, some different uh, performance updates that we have done. That. That's right. Uh, what's, what's behind that? Yeah, so when we launched, uh, so I, I guess level setting, we have the Intel Core Ultra 200S CPUs, just for everybody who doesn't know. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are our, that's our full lineup of, of desktop chips. Right. And uh, CPUs these days have a number of firmware and mm -hmm. software dependencies to expose their uh, full performance. Uh, this is like a core part of how CPUs are designed these days, not only from Intel, but from every CPU vendor, having the correct software stack is super important to get the full performance of that CPU. And, you know, unfortunately, we got some of that software stack wrong. Uh, it was it, it just like didn't reach the market at the right time or wasn't available to the right people. So we spent the last couple couple months trying to figure out like what exactly happened mm -hmm. and then how do we go fix it? And as of today, actually, um, all of the software updates are now in the field. They're downloadable. Just update your BIOS, update Windows, you're good. But, uh, you know, that was a, a multi-month journey to, right. to figure it all out and get it packaged together in a way that's easy for people to implement. Oh, that's great. So for the people who are out there, they don't get to see kind of the inside. They of, do not. <laughs> yeah, of how we, how the sausage just made, right? Yeah, yeah. Can you give us a little bit of insight of like when this happened, how, what did we do? What, like what measures that we took to make sure that we deliver and we have yeah. a great product out there? Um, so first and foremost, we have a, uh, multiple labs at Intel in, in Portland, Oregon, and uh, Santa Clara, California that measure the performance of our, of our silicon before launch. And we were seeing, uh, you know, very robust, stable performance on this on this CPU, and then we handed the hardware off to the reviewer community, mm -hmm. and they did not see the same thing. the same thing yeah. in any way. Uh, performance was much lower than than what we were seeing and measuring, and and this information came to us in bits and pieces. We'd hear a little a piece of info from right. one review over here, another from a review over here, and it, and it took a while for us to start assembling a complete picture of that something might be. A miss, right? And and so that was uh, a moment where we we're like, ooh, we need to we need to work on this very quickly. And then, so we got together. Uh, I'm going to go corporate jargon for a minute. We we pulled together what we call a tiger team, yep. uh, which is experts from around the company to start reverse engineering what exactly happened, uh, because the reports were all over the place. Some right. reviewers would say, hey, I ran this benchmark one time, got this score, same benchmark the second time, totally different score. But another reviewer would report totally different results. Right. They would say, same benchmark, I got the same score back to back. Okay, so now you have the same test on the same hardware producing two different results for two different people. And then it started multiplying. Right. And, and so now we had this complicated mix of issue reports that we were filing in a tracker and the whole team had to figure out like, which one of these are real, yeah. real reports, which of these are maybe user error that happens from time to time and why right why that's the hard one because a lot of these reports were erratic or intermittent or isolated and so it was hard to get all the data in one place to figure out the true root cause and that took a really solid six weeks we we were on meetings pretty much seven days a week for about six time. weeks to try to figure it out yeah so you get all these data and from that data, you have to figure out like, okay, which one's user error? Yeah. And not only that, from the data you're getting, you have to be able to reproduce it. That's really hard. In the lab, and that's a really hard. That's really so hard. So that's where the, guy, the issues yeah. were running. Yeah, because a lot of the time we get a report that says, hey, that says, hey, system did this. Okay, now we need to get to, 
exactly what BIOS settings were you running right. down to the individual setting on an individual BIOS on an individual motherboard. Okay, what OS settings did you have? What, yeah. How many Windows updates did you apply? Right. What version of the software you're running? Like it, it gets to this extraordinarily uh, complex data set very quickly. And then it's like times X number of reports. Right. And, and so now you have this huge spreadsheet of issue reports, each one with uh, piecemeal information, and none of them provide a complete picture. And you're, now you have to spend lab time trying to fill in the blanks. And that's, that's very challenging. It's a lot of exploratory work. It's a lot of guessing and experimentation. And that's just, that's just how issue reports go, that it's not unique to Intel. That's just yeah. industry-wide sort of, sort of thing. Uh, you never really get enough. But uh, that's what the team spent time doing, trying to recreate exactly the environments that we were receiving these reports from and then trying to figure out, okay, what was missing to, to get this result. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it takes a long time. And sometimes <clears throat> you haven't done testing enough, you don't know yeah. that how much that time consuming is. Oh my God. <laughs> we, we were, we, uh, so we were literally on meetings, uh, day, we took this extraordinarily seriously. Uh, we had a team of about 50 people across the company, daily meetings, even weekends and holidays, trying to get this done. And that, that's the right thing to do, by the way. Right. That's, uh, you know, that, I'm not saying that's an extraordinary no, no. effort, but it is a big deal to pull people away from their day jobs to get this, to get this done. But that was, that's the right call. That's the yeah. right thing for the reviewer community and the user community. And it just took a while. So let's go over the, the different issues that we saw that we kind of, we were able to, by the way, I mean, all Intel was mm -hmm. able to figure it out what we're doing. So the first one, that uh, you, got, you guys called out was the processor power management. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit more on that one. Yeah, this is uh, gonna get real nerdy real fast. Um, okay, so inside Windows, you have multiple power plans, mm -hmm. uh, power saver, balanced, high performance. Right. And what these plans actually control is how aggressively the CPU pursues high frequency or how quickly it can go from a sleep state to a high performance state and at the end of the day, it's like, it's all about latency and frequency. And what the PPM package does mm -hmm. is optimizes that power plan in the OS for that CPU that you have installed in your system. Right. Out of box, it's generic. It yeah. could, it's the same plan for mobile CPUs, 10 watt processors, 200 watt processors. It's so generic. So every industry vendor, including us, deploys these packages, we call it a PPM, to, to uh, address you know, customize that plan. Yeah. And it was, uh, you know, we got the timing wrong. That that PPM was supposed to be uh, released in late September mm -hmm. uh, on Windows Update, and it came out like first week November. You gotcha. right? So we were just out of sync with the time reviewers were looking at the hardware. And we had the PPM within our testing labs. Correct. But the reviewers didn't have access to that yet. Correct, because it, it just hadn't deployed on Windows Update yet. And that's not, that is not a Microsoft Thing. Yeah. You know, I know there's going to be people in the comments like, ah, Microsoft, but like that, that's on us, right? We, right. we just not, did not get the timing right because we were thinking about the retail launch date, the availability yes. date versus this reviewer timing. And, you know, that's a communication uh, gap in our company. And, and in addition to solving, you know, the functional issues, we also spend a lot of time figuring out how do we, how do we solve those communication gaps, right? That's the, right. That's the second set of challenges that we, you know, once we got the software into a place where it's, you know, starting to come out into the field, now we have to go fix these institutional um, limitations that allowed this to happen. Right, right. And yeah. we talked about that a little bit in our blog in, in December. Yeah, no, that's great. And also the PPM kind of also uh, branch it into another issue that we have there, it which certainly is does. APO, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, Intel APO or Application Performance Optimizer it, it helps games make better scheduling decisions. Right. Games games cannot know every single CPU that they're staring at, and mm -hmm. sometimes they make choices that aren't the best for performance. And so APO can step in and nudge them into a direction that, that produces better results. Not every game needs this, not every game benefits from it, but these software features can really help. And every processor vendor has something like this to, to do that because it's a relatively common thing in the, in the PC gaming industry. However, APO depends on the processor being in sort of an expected state, right? Right. The, the certain number of cores need to be online. And if they're accidentally asleep because you don't have the PPM, 
then the APO technology can't apply. You don't get the benefit. You also lose the benefit of the PPM. And so now you're double dipping into performance penalties. And it's just the penalties could be severe, but they could also be really minor. And it depended on what game, what motherboard, when you tested, what BIOS version. And so it was all over the place. And that also made it really hard to figure out what was going on. No, that that makes sense. So it is pretty interesting because, like you said, you have to have a known state in order for that application to disrupt correctly. So if if you're starting with not a good base or foundation, then... Then, yeah, APO can't apply. Right. Okay, so the other one, the other one issue that we were able to unveil was uh, the the blue screen of death when it came to an anti-cheating mm-hmm. uh, software that we have with Microsoft. Yeah, so uh, anti-cheat software like Easy Anti-Cheat, made by Epic Games, is actually driver based. Okay. Uh, it's not a driver we provide. It's a driver that's built into the games that use this technology, mm-hmm. and that driver has direct kernel level access in Windows, and that helps it uh, avoid being circumvented. So you you can't anti cheat the anti cheat, okay. uh, right? And, but but having direct kernel access, if the driver is incompatible in some way with the OS, then you can get blue screens because if you crash the driver, you crash the kernel. Okay. That makes um, sense. And and so games were using kind of broadly this driver, this easy anti cheat driver from April of 2024, and. Right about the time we were launching this new hardware, Windows 11 had updated to 24H2, mm-hmm. and it just wasn't compatible with that April anti-cheat mm-hmm. driver. Oh. So when you would launch one of these games, uh, because of that compatibility issue, they would simply blue screen out launch. And it just so happened that that, land, that moment landed on top, top of, of us that. trying to launch this new hardware into the market. What made that really challenging, not even the the, the blue screens, which are hard enough, right? Um, it, it, because we all kind of live and breathe this enthusiast community. Uh, as an enthusiast, my number one instinct when I see a blue screen is just to start troubleshooting it. Exactly. Like just try to solve it on my own, try to deal with it, and that actually that instinct slowed down the reports that we were receiving about this issue. Uh, it was actually circulating in the market for a couple weeks, but we didn't hear about it until very close to the launch of the 200S products uh, because uh, reviewers and enthusiasts were just trying to fix it. They yeah, didn't They didn't know that, that it was related to... Yeah, yeah, they had no idea what was causing this. And they thought, Ooh, you know, this is a new hardware, new platform, could be a beta BIOS, could be a stability issue. You know, did I do something wrong with my configuration? Right. So we ended up uh, reaching out to Epic Games, and they were great. You know, they they jumped right on top of this and and developed a newer version of the driver for 24H2 in conjunction with Microsoft, and then flushed that through games and game developers, and that got applied automatically on services like Steam, et cetera. And so that's largely cleared up in the oh, market. Oh, that's awesome! It's great to have a to have them to help us. And yeah, they, I mean, they they were super solid. Like the. I really, really appreciate how seriously Epic Games took that and how quickly they responded. You know, it's a huge credit to their company and their flexibility. Um, yeah, and they licked it really, really fast. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. And I think the last, the last issue that we were able to uncover was related to bio settings. Yeah, bio settings. You know, during, <laughs> during the pre <laughs> pre launch process, there are lots of BIOS updates that are coming into the field either. Uh, because a, a motherboard manufacturer wants to try a new combination of right. settings or they have a new optimization that they built in. So they're like, hey guys, just take this. It'll make your system a little faster. And some of those BIOS versions on some motherboards did not have all the right performance settings in effect. And, and that's I know, admittedly largely on us. Mm-hmm. We probably should have gone back with a short list, uh, like a VIP list of the most important performance settings right. and triple checked that those were right. We missed that step. Mm-hmm. And, and so that led to BIOS updates that might not have the most optimal features enabled. Uh, and, and credit to the motherboard makers, they solved that so fast. That was actually one of the first issues that they that we we fixed with our partners because it was very easy for them to go okay yep that should be on that should be off new BIOS update done nice so that that's actually been solved for a while but that was a challenge for reviewers that uh, unfortunately we introduced to them and uh, we've you know I can't go into all of it but we've implemented some new processes and procedures to right. make sure that doesn't happen, happen again. again yeah yeah no so the great thing is we've been able to identify 
All of them. And, sure. we, and we already provided the fixes as of today. That's right. Yeah, so, as, of, as of today, all you have to do is update your BIOS, update Windows, that's it. And, and we're very lucky that we have great partners and the whole community comes together to yeah. try to help all this stuff. Together, yeah, like so. as frustrating as it is and uh, for, for us to deal with and as frustrating as it is for reviewers to have to you yeah. know, endure that, um, I, you know, on behalf of all of us, like we're, we're super, super appreciative yeah. of the feedback. Uh, very candid feedback, <laughs> but necessary yes. because it, 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 it helped us fix you know, gaps inside our company. It made the product better. It made the product faster. We learned things. And I, that's what I love about this industry, man. Yeah, like, it's, it's, I, I love that there's like this direct relationship between, you know, some random user on Twitter or whatever can send, send a tweet and I read it that morning and go, oh, wow, okay, I can act on that. Like, that's super valuable. That's what I love about this. And that's what I love about the reviewer community that they enthusiastically take this on and, you know, that it's it's an entirely unpaid process. We just send these samples out and, you know, we hope they like it. Yep. We, we we design a product we hope they like, but that feedback was super valuable and uh, we definitely listened. We definitely took it very seriously and yeah, it's had a really positive effect on, on the CPU business at Intel. No, oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. great to hear. Robert, thank you so much. I know you're very busy today. Yeah, well, we to all do. are at CES, man. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Hope to see you yeah, again. Of course.